Our next guest has gotten an Emmy nomination. You know her from the hit show, Hung. This week, she starts a new gig as the star of the new NBC comedy, Save Me. It debuts Thursday, May 23rd. Uh, how did Save Me all come about? Um, well, I don't know how it first came about. John Scott Shepard, I think, was imagining fun things about his marriage. Uh, he's the writer <laughs> and creator of the show. But um, it came to me. Unfortunately, Han got canceled, and that was sad for me and my friends who created it. And uh, and my husband took me out to kind of help me lick my wounds over that. And fortunately, in about half an hour, the phone rang. <laughs> It was Bob Greenblatt at NBC, and he said, well, I'm really, really sorry about your show. Well, he's um, a big boss at NBC when the phone rings. Is, it's probably it, it a good was, call. It was nice. It was it was nice to see that there was a big boss calling me. We'll call him God for the moment. <laughs> uh, and he said, you know, I have some things over here that you might be interested in, and he pitched me, save me, and I just thought it was such a great idea and uh, perfect for me, a great way for me to funnel my kind of comedy and physical comedy, spiritual comedy, if you will, and um, really really take my sense of humor to a different place. And uh, so we started working together, working on the script and working with some writers and really kind of turning it into what we hope is magic. I want to show a clip actually from the show. Pastor Jim, I have an espresso maker I'd like to donate to the church if you think you could use it somehow. Oh, well, that's really nice, but uh, one of our members gave us a restaurant grade machine recently. Yeah. We can make six lattes at a time for our homeless dinners. You know, one of our regulars said it made him feel like he was homeless in Europe. Ah, uh, well, maybe I could just tell you something then. Mm -hmm. God talks to me. Lucky you. Right? <laughs> That's the best response I've heard. I mean, most people say, don't be a liar. Hey, you should probably get your head examined. Well, whoever says that to you, poo-poo on them. I think you're special. Hey, Pastor Jim. Well, good morning, Jeremy. God told me to tell you something, Pastor Jim. God talks to you, too? <laughs> I love you. God says you're going to live to be 242 years old, Pastor Jim. It's old. Yeah. <sighs> <laughs> so, so how would you describe Beth? I mean, is it is it is it unfair to say she's a little bit of a mess, a little bit, a little bit crazy? Oh, it's not unfair to say that at all. I mean, I have two <laughs> Beths really going on in the show. One is bad Beth, the Beth before all of this happened, and then one is the new Beth. But right. they're each equally as kooky kind. Of. Yeah. Um, Beth, when we come in and meet her, is a is a definite mess. You know, isn't isn't quite doing very well in her relationship, her marriage, her husband's having an affair, her daughter is, and she don't have a really good relationship. She's you know totally turned all of her get friends against her. This is Beth, and so we come into a place where she is. Um, you know, really needing to be saved, quite honestly, to, you know, talk directly to what the show is called. And she gets a second chance. And and as you see, God talks to us in all different ways uh, and different people in, uh, consider God to be talking to them through different things. Um, Beth definitely thinks she has a connection with the Almighty. And um, the magical kind of mysterious element of the show is that through this kind of connection, she has a knowledge about everybody in town. She has knowing, she has understandings. She she has powers that she didn't necessarily have before, some definitely otherworldly and some maybe by mistake. So there is, there is this second chance for her unravels. She finds herself in, in touch with her joy again for life and her commitment. And that's really the part that appealed to me, obviously, to have a woman having a second chance.